Hey, what's going on, peeps? Um, I wanted to have a chill, relaxed discussion about the viruses here in Resident Evil because it's a lot of people get them confused first and foremost and I mean honestly you can't blame anybody having the progenitor virus, the T virus, the C virus, T of this virus, D Veronica virus, like there's so many different kinds of viruses and they all have different uh, abilities and effects and uh, even reproduction ways. Uh, not, not all viruses are transmitted from one person to another by just simply biting the target it's they, they're all different in that ways and then you have the Resident Evil 4 and 5 dealio where people still call them zombies when they are well not zombies <laughs> I feel like we should take a moment here and just uh, I, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the viruses and where they come from in a more chill fashion like obviously this is not scripted this is me just kind of just 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 going with the back and forth here back and forth with you guys um just just to make it a little more candid because it, it can be uh a little a little confusing so I'm hoping I'm hoping that I do a good job here in explaining how everything works and eventually I'll make a, a, a video on how every virus like the, the type of abilities that the zombies do get and 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 all the different types of zombies that come from every single one of the viruses but I just want to I just want to have this discussion about like what they are and what are their differences, like in a very generic way, so that, you know, I think it's gonna be interesting. But let's, let's flash back, and this is like 19, like 60s or something, this is like way 30 years probably before the events in Resident Evil 1. So, the dealio is, there used to be this tribe in West Africa, their name doesn't really matter as much as, as much as they, they had this very interesting plant called the, I believe it was the, the Walk to the Sun or something? the the path to the sun is this really crazy like kind of origin name for the plant but the thing is the plant harbored a virus uh that was eventually called the primogenitor virus now this is the virus where the entire franchise kind of built upon the what this virus is it's a mutagen now what is a mutagen just so that we know just the basics of what this is. A mutagen is really just anything that changes your DNA structure or the way your DNA works in, in various different ways. So examples of a mutagens uh, that could be say gamma rays, ultra rays, x-rays, right? There's a lot of other chemicals that, that changes the way your DNA works, um, which some of them eventually do lead to cancer. But this specific mutagen, the primogenitor virus, did not cause cancer, which was uh, the reason why scientists from Umbrella were really interested in this. It, it had a lot of potential in kind of modifying people's bodies without actually causing cancer and just simply, you know, fucking up people's lives and killing them. And uh, they grew pretty interested in it. Now, the reason why the plant is... Uh, was kind of kept secret from the get-go and the reason why it's so rare to find is because for whatever reason the plant only grows well it can grow anywhere but the virus is only produced by the plant when grown specifically in this region of Africa because the the guys from Umbrella actually took it to the United States and they cultivated it and farmed it but for whatever reason the virus wouldn't come out of the plant so uh, that's you know, they had to like go, go back to Africa and kill all the Africans that were in that village so that they could take their plants. So, <laughs> I guess that's what humans always do, they just go and take, but... Um, there's a reason why it's so rare to find the plant as it is. But this is the primogenitor virus and this is the beginning of everything. Now, this virus specifically can't do shit. They tried so many times to like put it into people's... Uh, bodies, but it just wouldn't adapt, it wouldn't grab, and, and, and the people would just straight up die, so it wasn't working. So, what they ended up doing was that they combined the primogenitor virus with the DNA of a leech, you know, like leeches. They tried to find a, a creature that had only one purpose in life, and that was to feed. Because they figured that if, you know, if they combine the DNA of a creature like so, with the virus and the virus could just like feed into someone else's body and maybe form like a symbiotic relationship with the host. That was like the plan and it worked. From this combination of the primogenitor virus and the leech DNA, they formed the T virus. Now, the, the this T virus, this is the one that is the popular one, it's the zombies virus. This is where you see like Resident Evil 1, those zombies are, are all because of the T virus. 
the zombies from Resident Evil 2 and 3, those are all T-Virus zombies. Uh, the campaign from Leon in Resident Evil 6, that's T-Virus. I believe the first movie, uh, the first canon movie, Resident Evil Degeneration, that's T-Virus. So, it's the typical, like, if the zombie bites you, then you become another zombie and so on and so forth. That's the T-Virus, the basic one. Now, uh... In Resident Evil 1, what they were trying to do was they wanted to find a way to gain biological immortality. Because look, the T-Virus, that's cool and all. You can destroy a city with that shit. You throw it in there and the, the, whole, the whole city will be down in a matter of months. And there's really almost no way to stop it. Like, it's really powerful. But what they really wanted to be immortal. And they wanted to create super soldiers. And the T-Virus didn't lend itself for that very well. So... They try to do experiments to make a better version of the virus. So they went and built the mansion in the Arclay Mountains, which is the Resident Evil 1 mansion. Uh, they ended up killing the architect because he knew all the secrets of the laboratory. And they tried to do experiments with his wife and his daughter to see if they could find a way to create this virus. Now, the, the wife, it, it just didn't work out very well. She couldn't. Uh, the virus just wouldn't grab her as a host, so they ended up killing the wife. But the daughter apparently uh, became a really good host for the virus. The virus really liked her for whatever reason. So she, she ended up becoming a tyrant. Now, a tyrant, uh, you see, when people get infected with the T-virus, there is like a one in a million chance. Like, it's something like that ridiculous, actually. It might be 10 million. Um, there's a very low chance that you become a tyrant. So what it is, it's just pretty much like your body... Uh, just really works well with the virus and they s s just they just it, see, I don't know how to explain it it just your body just adapts really well to it and you you grow exponentially you become this monster or whatever you become more stronger more stronger than any other uh, zombie but it's like a very low chance for that to happen and for whatever reason she became a tyrant so they combined this parasite called the nemesis parasite and a bunch of other injections of random shit that the game never told us. And they formed the G-Virus. Now, the G-Virus is, is pretty much almost the same as the T-Virus, except that it's just stronger. Um, you're pretty much immortal with the G-Virus, which was the purpose that they wanted to, to, to get from this. And, and obviously, it shows in the game. If you try to shoot Lisa Trevor in the game, uh, you cannot kill her. It doesn't matter if you, like, headshot her. Like, she just won't die. So that was the whole point of it. They, they actually succeeded. In forming the G virus, um, and uh, that's also the reason why I believe Ada was in Resident Evil 2. Like th those guys were all trying to get the G virus because it's like the best version of the virus, it's the, the important one. But uh, that's pretty much where it is, right? And the cool thing about the G virus, though, is that uh, the way that it reproduces is very different from the T virus. See, the G virus, uh, if you get scratched or bit by someone with the G virus, you don't get it yourself. What you have to do is you actually have to reproduce, and the way they reproduce. It's uh, similar to what you see in the beginning of Resident Evil 4 when you see like uh, Jill kind of like uh, putting this vulva or, or this thing inside someone else's mouth and then they transform into the, the zombie. That's pretty much what it is. The G virus, um, I, I, it, you, you have to like, the, your reproductive organ is like something in your mouth and then you, you take it out of your mouth and then you put it into someone else's mouth. The thing is, it, it only works with someone who shares your same DNA and that's the reason why you don't see many G virus zombies anywhere. In fact, Cherry from Resident Evil 6 is the only actual person that has ever been uh, the cause of a reproductive process of the G virus. Like she's, she's what comes after the reproductive process of the G virus. Um, She's the only person that has ever happened to, so uh, you need to be like either a brother or a sister or like a mother, uh, a daughter or something. It, there needs to be like a like a DNA relation between the two for it to work, otherwise you just end up dying. So that's very interesting to me. <laughs> um, what else? Let's see, what else is there? So you got the, the T Veronica virus. I'm not sure what game this is from, to be honest, because I don't think I've played... I don't think I've played this one, but the t virus is pretty much the... See, the, the problem with the T-Virus was that people people were dumb. And that, I guess that's probably the what happens if you combine yourself with leech DNA. I mean, leeches are not known for being very smart, so you get leech DNA in your body, you'll probably only have that kind of notion of like, I need to feed or whatever, and that's what happens, right? So, uh, 
what they try to do was they they removed the leech virus from the process so all they had was the primogenitor virus and they combined the primogenitor virus with this virus found from an ant queen and because they wanted to they were trying to do that whole bit where like okay so uh, maybe I can control other people and get this type of powers if I get this virus from the ant queen you know just like the ant queen controls the ants they're trying to do that and uh, and I guess they created the T. Veronica virus with this. The problem with this virus was that you needed to be incubated for like 15 years for it to work because it was like a very slow process. You know, wait, the the leech had is the leech DNA had its disadvantages, but the one advantage was that it was bam quick. Right, you bam your zombie, it works. But uh, with the queen, it, it wasn't so. So she had to be incubated for like 15 years, and it just didn't end up working. <laughs> so that was like one thing, right? Um, what else do we have, guys? There's the C virus from the... So just to give you guys like a little... So everything comes from either the primogenitor virus, the T virus, or the G virus. Like those are like the main, more probably the more important uh, viruses that where everything else kind of comes into place, right? So the C virus uh, is a combination of the G virus and the T Veronica virus. And uh, the T of S virus is like the T virus combined with like the Avis virus. I mean, it's an obvious <laughs> combination there. But the Avis virus is just like this this virus that they found in like deep sea creatures, and they combine that with the T virus, and they form this kind of like aquatic zombies, <laughs> pretty much. And uh, yeah, I mean, and just by combining different DNAs, like you get different results, which I think is the cool part of the T virus and the primogenital virus that everything just kind of like, okay, I'll just do like a reptilian DNA into this T virus and bam, you have like hunters. And and, and that's the cool part, right? That you can create all sorts of shit with this. Now, um, I want to talk about Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5 because this is where people get the, the most mistakes. Uh, Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5, the Las Plagas or the Ganado, and the uh, Manji or whatever, I think it's Magi or Manji, I think it's Magi. Fuck, I don't remember the names of the guys. But those are not actually zombies. And I, I just, I wanna, I'm gonna bitch slap, I'm gonna roundhouse kick whoever says they're zombies because they're not zombies. The the Ganados from Original 4, what they are, so I want you to grab, I want you to square off everything we just talked about, every single virus we just talked about, every single type of zombie we just talked about, and I want you to like, Put that into like another corner of your brain. Just forget about that for a second. What the get what the plagues are are a parasite. They are not a virus, and they have nothing to do with the other viruses. So, what uh, happened was that apparently there was a, a cave deep below the Salazar Castle in Spain that held this very very old parasites uh, called the plagues parasite. So. I guess this guy called Sadler, he kind of knew that they were there and he conjointed with like the Salazar guy and, and, and they tried to dig it up or whatever and they did research in this parasite and they found out that it had mind controlling abilities. And that's pretty much what it is. So the parasite can either be formed on egg form, on spore form or in adult form. If, if you get uh, the parasite in its adult form inside of you, the parasite just simply like wraps onto your spinal cord and takes control of you, like it is what it is. You guys know that the little creepy like parasite that like controls snails and throws them into like lakes so that like fishes can like eat them. So then like birds can eat them because the, the end goal of the parasite is to end up in, in like a bird's uh, body. So it like controls the snail so that it creates all this process so that it eventually ends up in the, in the bird's body. Like, <laughs> it's kind of like that in a less creepy way. It controls the host and does whatever it wants. Now the cool thing about the Plaga is that the, those that are infected with the Plaga retain a substantial amount of their intelligence. And that's the cool bit about it, right? Because the, the, the guys in Resident Evil 4 and 5, they, they can think. They can react to things, they can work together to solve puzzles, right? You see in the beginning of, and this is the beauty of Resident Evil 4, in the very beginning when Leon is like in the village and he's like trying to hide in this house and you see like the fucking uh, Ganados like putting la uh, stairs up and, and like organizing themselves and surrounding the house, like you can see the intelligence level of the, of the Plaga Parasite, like it's a lot more than just fucking mindless zombies, right? And, uh, and that's the beauty of it. Now, there are two types of... Oh, okay, before I get even into that. So I, told, I, I talked about the adult parasite. So you can also find it in egg form or in spore form. Now, the, the spore form is what it is. It's just like very small 
particles of like the parasite and if you uh, sm uh, smell those if you inhale those uh, it might take like years for you to like get the the grown-up version of the parasite in you before it starts controlling you uh, which is what happened to some of the some of the miners that were actually digging this cave in the first place. But uh, if you get into egg form, which is you know when they inject Leon with the with the virus that was an egg form version, it might take like weeks or so. But that's why he didn't transform just like automatically. And that also explains in the second movie, Resident Evil, uh, what was it, Damnation? You can see that those are plagas. And you can you can tell when when they're plagas and when they're zombies. If they're plagas, they have that kind of like awkward like bulba that comes out of their mouth. And when you shoot them in the head, they those tentacles come out of their head and they stay alive. Like that that those are plagas. That's how you can tell the difference. But you can see like in the movie how like they they take that little egg from their mouth and put it into someone else's and then then they transform into the into the other zombies or plagas. So I, I, even I make that mistake of calling them zombies. <laughs> but um but yeah, that's the difference. Now, there are two types of plagas. There are the submissive plagas and the dominant plagas. The submissive plagas take orders from the dominant plagas. Like, it's really that simple. Uh, that's what Sadler had. He had the dominant plaga on himself so he could control all the submissive ones. And that's pretty much it. Like, that's... I mean, I'm, I could talk for, man, just like hours about all the different types of... Of viruses. Let me know what you guys want me to talk about because there's so much, man, in this. Like, I, 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 I'm sure that I forgot a lot of stuff that I wanted to talk about. But I'm looking at the timer here, and I already see that I'm in the, I'm in 16 minutes already. So fuck. <laughs> um. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, some of you guys, I'm sure that some of you guys are wondering what the hell, like, some of the special types of zombies are, like, say, Nemesis from Resident Evil 3. That's just a tyrant. That do you guys remember when I told you guys about the G virus? Uh, the, the, the G virus, to make the G virus, they had to do research on Lisa with the uh, T virus and this parasite that they, that they made um, especially for, for the virus, for the creation of the G virus. Well, that parasite is called the Nemesis Type A parasite. Now, that, it, that parasite was created so that they could enhance the intelligence of the zombies, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, if you grab a tyrant and you add the parasite, that's what Nemesis is. Like, he's just, that, that's what most of those big fucking awesome guys are in, like, the, the bosses. Like, those boss fights that you see in, in any Resident Evil game. Like, all they are is just, like, a, a T-virus tyrant combined with the type A Nemesis parasite. Like, that's what comes out comes out of that so just to let you guys know what those are and honestly every zombie is just like a concoction of different things and that's the beauty of the, of the of the series i think that you can mix it's like a it's like lego like you can build anything just by combining like different different viruses and different dna from like different animals and that's i think that's cool as fuck anyways guys if you have any questions like let me know and i'll i'm here to answer man this is the resident evil month so we're just we're just gonna talk about resident evil man just <laughs> whatever you guys want i'll do it and uh, hope you guys enjoyed Leon's uh, lore. I, I thought it was pretty cool. But yeah, guys, uh, see you guys next time, I suppose. Bye bye.